Good day, and welcome to the Bear Monology Quest channel, where we explore created kinds in scripture, science, and society. I am your host, Todd Elder, and in this episode we answer the question, what is the scientific model of created kinds? The short answer is a set of testable hypotheses regarding the taxonomic relationships of plants and animals based on the core concept of limited ancestry. The long answer is somewhat more complicated. There are actually multiple models of created kinds, and they can differ a little or a lot from one another. If we start a Venn diagram, we can see that Young Earth creationism is one of the major categories for a model of created kinds. It can have significant overlap with the intelligent design model of created kinds, which can overlap significantly with theistic evolution models, but that has very little overlap with Young Earth creation models. In the middle of this diagram, they can agree that some type of guided process is occurring. Even if we just focus on the Young Earth version of created kinds, there can be small variations between models. Therefore, to distinguish what I am about to present to you from other models, I will label this Elder's model of created kinds because this is the model that I am using to make predictions and the model that I am testing. The differences from other Young Earth creationist models is largely the concepts I am personally developing and testing and hope to have further reviewed and accepted by the entire creation community in the coming months and years. The first section of the model I would like to look at is form. When the created kinds originally appeared, they were separate and unique and fully functional. Any similarity in design was due to similarity in function and not by common ancestry. A created kind has a recognizable shape that does not change significantly through time, even if the surface features, such as coloration, do change frequently. Based on experience, the level of created kinds will average near the family level of classification. Our example in this video will be my computer bird kind. The kind on the left looks similar to some of the songbird kinds, and the one on the right looks similar to the hummingbird kind. Although they have the similarities that come with being birds, there are many differences, including the shape of the beak and the wingtips. The two basic forms shown here do not change throughout their respective kinds. The second section of the model I would like to look at is speciation. Although speciation occurs, a change in form does not occur. Species have a recognizable set of surface characteristics that are reproductively connected. Because speciation is driven by environmental acclimation, habitats and geographic boundaries will help determine species. Species are able to, and prefer to, mate with others of the same species, but they can potentially hybridize with other species of the same kind if necessary. Extinction of a species occurs when the species is no longer able to acclimate to changing environments due to limited genetic variation. If all species within a kind go extinct, the entire kind is then lost. Our computer bird kind seen at the top is expected to speciate over time, such as these six examples here. Each bird would prefer to mate with its own species, but should be able to mate with any of the other bird species represented here. The third section of the model I would like to look at is genetics. The original kinds had a wide range of genetic potential which allows for speciation, but still limits the amount of change that can occur. Over time, the genetic code is building up an increasing number of problems. The primary cause of genetic reduction is speciation through environmental acclimation, which reduces the available diversity. The computer bird kind had a broad genetic variation built within. As this kind settles in different habitats, the surface features of the bird will change with the genetic potential to acclimate to that environment, and thus speciation begins and happens rapidly at the beginning. The fourth section of the model I would like to look at is the historical timeline. The original kinds appeared approximately 6,000 years ago and later suffered an aquatic extinction event about 4,500 years ago, during which most of the fossils found today were laid down. Because of changing environments, speciation occurred rapidly at that time. Due to relative consistency of habitats today, 
speciation has slowed drastically. The original computer bird kind appeared on Earth about 6,000 years ago, and speciation began and continued until a major extinction event occurred about 4,500 years ago. We do not know what the surface features of those species looked like, but we have the fossils to recognize the form has not changed. During the extinction event, a limited amount of the kind survived. Afterwards, speciation began again in the newly formed habitats and has continued until today. In summary, the major elements of a scientific model of created kinds includes, first, a distinct and unique form that does not change over time, along with a limited amount of variation in surface appearance. Second, species that are recognizable because of reproductively connected characteristics, which are able to mate with others of the same species and potentially hybridize with others of the same kind. Third, a broad genetic variability existed in the original kinds, and this variability is reduced as time passes because of speciation and environmental acclimation. Fourth, is an expected appearance of kinds approximately 6,000 years ago, with an aquatic extinction event 4,500 years ago. For more information about this or other topics, you may purchase my book or visit my website at www.bearmanology.net.